spacecraft. So we operate our own spacecraft for our, for our customers and for ourselves. Uh, we've also been helping third parties operate their satellites and we're, we're looking at expanding that as well. And then the last one is the digital service, which is about um, inside capacity and in orbit. So again, the in there is um, building an in orbit infrastructure so that people can upload either software defined payloads repurposed to spacecraft for their own needs or rent capacity on um, infrastructure that we put in place. I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more later because it links with the Azalea program. Um, we've got some sort of key partners and customers along the way, but again, um, why we started doing that. So the, the, the need that we identified in the early days was is kind of the, the barrier to getting in space, which a lot of people talk about. Um, and, and so by creating this, uh, this is Faraday 1, and it had eight different payloads from seven different customers, all in a six year spacecraft. So the, the, their payload was just their sort of annual R&D budget. We had a couple of startups, we had university departments, all, all buy into that idea that, that we could help them get their stuff into orbit um, and also it ties into something that's becoming increasingly important in terms of sustainable use of space. So by launching fewer satellites doing more things, hopefully we can help keep things tidy. Um, and that maps to the digital idea, which again, for our, for our future is to repurpose spacecraft once we're up there. Um, and that's, that's kind of been part of our thinking for a while. And it just, um, it, you could argue whether the sustainability or the economics came first, but one way or the other it kind of worked out for us. Um, so again, low swap schedule and cost. So from well, three U CubeSats, we've done a six U um, really. Uh, we've designed and worked on studies for three U's for various customers. Um, but, but what we're really about is more towards the 150 kilo microsat stuff. So, so those are sort of renders of what we're doing at the moment in terms of our next generation of Faraday. So the six U stuff um, came about kind of um, not well. Yeah, there was a bit of opportunism about it because we were we were working towards this kind of structure <coughs> of the, the, the microsat, um, but the timescales and the cost of developing that were, were quite slow. And then we, we got together with a number of customers that wanted to go quicker, and actually we were able to condense them into a six year and find a really uh, attractive launch price. Um, and so that that took us down a stepping stone away from six year stuff. Um, so yeah, the ride share. So basically space is a managed service, so, so we work with customers either with like, a desire to have a payload built that we can help them design and build, or hardware that they have themselves, uh, and we would host that on a shared satellite and, and basically operate it for them. We do, do the launch, do the regulatory support, make sure everything's up and operational, and then they can be involved for a whole different number of levels between you know, shaping, shaping their payload or just getting the data effectively. Um, yeah, so again, we've got the, and that's Friday one, I think. Um, so the history today, so actually it's quite nice to come and talk here today, so thank you, Lou, because actually, um, starting in 2015 as a, just a consultancy, we've actually had support from Catapult, UKSA, organizations, organizations like here today, and it's taken us all the way through from one person in 2015 to um, I think we're at 80 today. So since 2018, we've doubled in size every year. Um, it looks like we might do that again this year, which is exciting. Um, so again, from, from being involved with the catapult um, all the way through to um, nearly 18 months ago now, being um, supported by VA systems. So, so it's really, uh, I, can, I can personally vouch for the success of back <coughs> organizations like this in terms of getting them over the line. It got us to the point where we're able to do um, the Faraday One program started in 2018, really, um, and it got us to the point through that support where we were able to offer that as a fully commercial offering. Um, we, we believe that was the first one that was actually a fully commercial ride mission. Can't prove it, but I think it's true. Um, unfortunately, in 2020, Rocket Lab dropped us in the sea, but there we go. But along the way, we signed up with DESA, so we've had um, a, an ongoing Pioneer program, which is really helping us take that step between the 6U and the, the microsats. Um, bit of history. What's next? Um, 
So reconfigurable space as a service, in space digital, currently digital, we want to decide which one we're going to call it, because we've got two names on the same slide pad. Um, and again, this basically is what I was saying before, is, is trying to enable um, uploadable payloads and, and basically put an infrastructure in place, place that we can use for, our, for ourselves. We're, we're trying to develop the data science. Matt, our CTO, at the back of the room there, who can tell you all about the future applications and, and where we're going with that. Um, but basically, this is what put us on the BAE systems roadmap. This is this is kind of why we were acquired and, and part of what we're doing next. Um, the reason for doing the, the, the digital and the, and the rideshare to an extent, but mainly the digital thing, is something that we found through the work with Faraday One and Faraday Phoenix. Is is it takes a long time for startups to get anything to, into orbit and start getting data back in and return on investment. It costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time. Uh, typically, it's more than five years to get the proper paying customers. Um, and also, you're, you're at the mercy of uh, launch window. So that, again, that's something that we found working with well, SpaceX has really helped there. Uh, so we've not been overly lucky with our launches so far. But SpaceX having that predictable time scale and cadence lends itself for us to try and create our infrastructure, which we're hoping will then take less than a year for people to have their idea, for us to get it in orbit, and then start seeing revenue back. Um, and, and really, the, the kind of long pole in that tent is almost certainly the regulatory aspects of it. Um, and again, that's something that we're getting lots of experience with, um, and we've done it a few times now. So. And, then, and then moving on from that, is, um, well, how do you make it upgradable? So, repurposing it. And this is something, again, we've been looking at for a while. Um, before Faraday One, we were kicking a few ideas around. Uh, and there was either space-time industries or the Faraday service. Space-time was um, real-time video from space. And to, to try and underpin that, we were working and developed a prototype with <coughs> Surrey University, actually, for a steerable and zoomable camera. Um, and we were putting the infrastructure in place so that you could actually get real-time video from space. Faraday took over, um, but we're going back around that now and thinking the sort of technologies and the, the ideas we were looking at as part of that and as part of the Faraday service kind of lends itself to then, can you can you modify and upgrade um, spacecraft in orbit? Because I mean, people are doing it, right? It's refueling and all that sort of thing. Um, so we're thinking, well, can, can you put new processes on, new batteries and all of that sort of stuff? Um, so can we, well, um, yeah, can we enhance the offering whilst it's already up there? Um, and then working with people like Virgin Orbit about the responsive launch and, and flying cooperative clusters of spacecraft and can you punch in you know, an extra satellite into a cooperative cluster. Um, actually, this is in the wrong place because that's kind of history. So Prometheus 2, that was another example of the, the physical service. So that was with the STL and Airbus, two, two, two CubeSats, unfortunately, on launch one earlier this month, never mind. Um, so again, that was, uh, again, demonstrating the service tools. So, so they were using the same infrastructure that our rideshare customers and the digital service customers would use in terms of tasking payloads. Uh, and they were actually able to execute that through ground test as well. So we've proven that out even without having to launch. Um, and again, it was a, a, a wide range of different payloads. So there's a number of SDR payloads, a number of uh, 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 imaging payloads. And we, we basically worked with Airbus. It was, again, it was off the back of Faraday One and Faraday Phoenix that we convinced the STL they actually needed more satellites. Um, that would be cool again. Um, and then Titania. So, again, the stepping stone to the next level of service is the Titania spacecraft. So, again, customers to the STL. It's uh, around about 150 kilo um, microsat. And so, it'll be the first flight of our new microsat platform. Um, it's got a laser comms terminal on it and, and various uh, RF experiments. Uh, and that's due to launch this year. Thank you for the schedules. And then the next thing, the, the, the big thing really for us at the moment is the um, Azalea Orbit in Space Digital. So that is actually the implementation, the first implementation of this in orbit infrastructure. So it's a corporate cluster of four satellites. For the um, cameras and software defined radios, there are three of them. And then the fourth one is a, a SAR uh, spacecraft that we're, we're 
um, in partnership with Fireside. And the idea is then that you, you, you get a kind of fractionated um, observation suite, if you like, uh, and then it's about building the, 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 the rich data. Um, so that is really the key of the investment for us from the AE systems. So it's, it's a kind of shared resource. So it's a common infrastructure which will allow the AE systems to access their, or address their defense markets and us to do commercial and civil. Um, and actually, the the AE systems have been really supportive and helpful in terms of trying to keep us nimble and small and, and have our own processes. So it's you know it's quite a fast paced program for them. Um, so Titania will be shooting this year. Um, the Azalea launch should be uh, yeah, Azalea, the first cluster will be going up in uh, 2024. Um, Faraday 2, so Faraday second generation ride chain from the microsat one, I think that actually will be in um, 2025 now that launch. So we will be announcing, I think at the Singapore conference we'll be targeting a launch of uh, launch for onboarding customers for a, a bigger Microsoft uh, ride share mission. Um, so that's that. 2025 we'll be growing that in space digital cluster uh, constellation. So there'll be groups I think we're looking for aiming for two more clusters in 25 and, and then again in 26 to build out the constellation of those clusters. And then, no pressure to Matt, but we're going to be doing a little bit demo of our framework stuff in 2026. Um, so that's a bit of a wrap, actually. Fantastic. Well, thank you.